Hi, I'm Ron Covell, and I have some great news. I was recently contacted by my favorite person on YouTube, this old Tony, and he asked about doing a collaboration. If you're not familiar with Tony's channel, I think you'll love what he does. He's very deserving of the 900,000 subscribers he's rapidly approaching. His videos cover a broad spectrum of topics, with a special emphasis on machining and metal fabrication, but he also gets into special projects, like building a pasta machine, a go-kart, and he's even done some experiments with time travel. I'm afraid I just don't have time to explain. Okay, now I should have some time to explain. Tony is a highly talented craftsman and designer, but his totally unique style and his wry sense of humor set his videos apart. You'll find a link to his channel in the description below. After tossing some ideas around, we decided to make dust pans. I volunteered to make two sheet metal pans, and Tony will make two handles. When finished, we'll swap parts, so we each will have one complete dustpan. So why would you make a big production out of constructing a dustpan when you can buy one inexpensively? Well, there's more to life than just being practical, but also, I'll demonstrate some great layout and fabrication techniques I don't think you'll see anywhere else. These might help you with your own projects. So let's dive in. The first step in making the dustpan is to make a full-size layout of the top view of the pan itself. So I'll be working on heavy paper here, and I'm going to do my layout based on two lines. This line is spaced two inches from the front edge, and this is the center line. I want the overall width of the pan to be 15 inches, so I'll measure out seven and a half inches on each side of center and make a mark there. And I want the dust pan to be 9 inches deep, so I'll make a couple of marks 9 inches back from the layout line. And I'll connect these points with a straight line. So we have the front and back edges laid out. I want the size to taper at a 10 degree angle, so I have a protractor set to 10 degrees. So I'll line this up on the front edge, and I'll draw a line to the back. I want a fairly generous radius in these corners, so I've cut a disc to be 7 inches in diameter. And I'll put this disc in place so it's tangent to the two lines, and I'll draw an arc. So these lines show the perimeter of the pan. I want to give this back edge a little bit of a curve, so to do that, I'll clamp my straight edge to a weight and I'll just give it a little bit of an arch and I'll set it so it's tangent to both these curves and draw a slight arch. So that's the all over shape of the pan. The dust pan will be made of two basic parts. One is the base of it, basically the flat part. Then there's going to be walls on the back and the side and at the top of that wall I want there to be a flange. So to create this shape, I'm going to make a hammer form from wood. But I want the top edge of these walls to have a nicely radius edge. I'm going to make the top layer of the hammer form from quarter inch round steel bar. So I'm going to use two lines of quarter inch wide masking tape to enlarge my layout to show me how the perimeter looks with that half inch flange. So there's our first pass. Now I'll add another quarter inch to that, and that will give me the half inch border that I want. So the outside edge of the tape shows the border of the flange at the top of the dustpan. So the next step is bending a bar to match this curve, and I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to make a fixture for bending the quarter inch steel bar. So this is three quarter inch thick MDF, medium density fiber board. And I've made a template here, it's a six inch diameter circle. I've learned that the quarter inch rod springs back about 15 or 20 percent. 
So if we bend it over a 6 inch circle, when it springs back it should match the 7 inch circle on our pattern. So I'm going to make a line around the perimeter of this disc. And then we'll cut on that line. But also I want to put a little bit of curve in here so it matches the curve on our pattern. So let me get our straight edge here and I'm just going to eyeball the curve that I think might be right. I can change this pattern as many times as I need to until the part comes off at just the shape we want. So that's going to be our first trial with this and I'll make the cut. I'll sand the edge of this to smooth it up, then I'll bend a piece of quarter inch rod around this form and see how well that matches our template. It's time to make the first test bend, so I have this bending fixture clamped to my workbench and I put a stop block right next to it with just enough space between the stop block and the form that I can put a piece of quarter inch bar in that space. The stop block has another stop on this end, so I can repeat the bends by bringing the bar tight against this stop. So let's bend this against the form and see what we get. So it makes a very smooth bend, but I'm not at all sure how well it matches our pattern. So let's lay this right on the pattern and we can check it out. So there's a little angular difference here. Um, let's see how the curve part matches. Actually, when I line it up on this curve and this curve, it looks just about perfect. So I'm very happy with the curved part of it. And the only change we need to make to the form is to bend this angle a little bit steeper. So I'm measuring that angle at about five degrees. So if this bends five degrees more, that will give us the bend we need. All I need to do is to modify our bending form. I've cut a paper template that matches the curve on the form. Let's put that into place and I'll rotate this about five degrees. Then I'll mark a new line. Then I can cut this line and we'll bend another test piece. I recut this edge. I'm going to rebend this bar. I'll slide this all the way into the fixture till it bottoms out. Pull it tight against the form. Then we'll try it on our full size layout. And that looks excellent. So now I'll cut a bar that's long enough to do both sides. So this piece of sock is long enough to make the full piece. Let's put it into the fixture and make the first bend. Now I'm going to try this on the pattern and my goal is to find the center very accurately. So we'll lay this into place. Make sure it's fitting just so. I'm going to put a center mark on this. Now to find the length I need to trim this to, I'm going to use a technique called rollation. And I didn't make that up. This is a legitimate layout technique. So I'm putting a mark on the table that's in line with the center line I put on this part. And when I started, I started with this edge flush with the edge of the table. So what I need to do now is to put the center line on the mark I just made and then wherever this crosses over the table edge that's where I need to trim this so that when I make the second bend it'll come out to be exactly as wide as the pattern. So I'm going to quickly make that cut off camera. Now we'll make the second bend. And we'll try this on the pattern. And by gosh, that is just about perfect. Looks like it's closed in a little bit more than I wanted, so I'm going to open this up by hand just a tiny bit. And that is within a sixteenth of an inch of our pattern. That's good enough for a dustpan. Now if you're making the space shuttle door, you might have to get a little greater accuracy. But for work like this, that's plenty good. So I'm very happy with how this inner bar has shaped. 
And the next step is to bend another bar that fits tightly around the outside of this. I have the outer band fitted now, and as you can see, it's just about a perfect fit. And let me give you a little insight about how I went about making the outer band. I used the same fixture. I didn't want to make another fixture. And you can see that bending two bars around the same fixture, the outer bar requires a bigger radius. So it's more difficult to put a bend into a bar, but it's much easier to take a bend out. So I simply opened up the bend by hand until I got a very nice fit. So you can see in this area those two match just about perfectly now. So now I'll tack weld these two parts together. I have the material clamped together and now I'm ready to make the tack welds. Here are the two bars tacked together and now we can try them against the pattern and it looks like the fit is excellent. Very, very good fit up. Certainly good enough for a dustpan. So I'm going to use screws to hold the steel bars to the wooden hammer form. So I'm going to lay out and drill a screw hole between each of the tack welts. Now I'll drill the clearance hole for the screw. And the last step is countersinking each screw hole so the flathead screws will fit flush. This is the size screw I'll be using. It's a number six drywall screw. So I'll countersink it deep enough so the head of the screw becomes flush. That looks good. All of the holes are countersunk and all of the screws fit flush. It's time to start working on the wooden part of the hammer form now. I'm going to position this steel bar an inch and a quarter away from this edge. So I'll put a small mark on the wood at an inch and a quarter. Then I'll screw this steel part into place using drywall screws. And I want to cut a border on this wood an inch and a quarter away from this edge, all the way around. So I have a piece of inch and a quarter stock here. I'll put the stock right up against the steel and draw a line. I'll draw another line on the other side. And then using a saber saw, I'll cut on these two lines. And I'll slide the wood down for the next cut. The material I'm using is half inch thick plywood and I want my hammer form to be a total of two inches thick. So I need four pieces cut exactly to this same size. So I have all the pieces of plywood cut to size. I cut one extra piece and you'll see why I want that before long. I want to put a couple of lines on this so I can remember how these stack together. I also want to round the top corners. So I made a template here that shows the radius I want to cut it to. I'm also going to drill holes for alignment pins. It'll be crucial to keep these aligned perfectly as we get on to the next steps. I've trimmed all the pieces, drilled the alignment holes, and smoothed the edges. I'm going to make a cut around the inner edge of the bar to separate the inner part of the hammer form from the outer part. And I want this cut to be at a 20 degree angle. So I've made a simple fixture. I found a piece of tubing that a pencil is a snug fit inside and I tack welded the tube to a small bar of steel so I could clamp this assembly to a bevel protractor and I've set the angle so that it's exactly 20 degrees between the base of the protractor and the angled edge of the pencil. So with this assembly I'm going to drag it around the edge of the form and make a mark right on the wood at this 20 degree angle. So that's the mark I'll cut on. I'm putting a spacer block on my table so the jigsaw blade won't hit the table. So let's get this clamped into place. And I've set my saber saw at a 20 degree angle. So I'm going to make the cut all the way around the perimeter.
So there's our first cut. With the top layer cut, I can put it into place, align it with the pins, and then use the edge of the top layer to mark the second layer for trimming. The center's cut out of all these pieces, so let me put the sack together and align it with pins. These are the centers that were cut out. So the next thing I want to do is to cut the center out of the inner portion. That will allow me to get clamps between these two pieces. So I'm going to use a compass to mark the cut line on this part. I've cut the centers out of these inner pieces, and now I'm ready to start gluing these parts together. We'll do it one layer at a time. I'm using a yellow wood glue. We'll put the next layer into place. Align everything with the pins and put some more glue down. And now I'm going to wipe down some of the excess glue that's squeezing out. I'll let the glue set up for a few hours, then I'll use this same clamping procedure to glue together the stack of wood for the inner part of the hammer form. Here's the first lamination. It came out very nice. I'm going to sand this smooth now, and you can see I've screwed the steel bar into place. There's actually a little step in most places between the bar and the wood, so I need to sand this down until it's completely tangent with the steel. So a convenient way to sand the inside corner here is by using a sanding drum. So I'm going to sand this until it just touches that quarter inch bar. I've sanded this down and I have good contact with the steel all the way from the end of this point. I can get the flat sections a little bit smoother by using a sanding block. This section is smoothed up very nicely, so I'll reorient this and do the last section. At this point the hammer form is completed. I'm confident the shaping will go well since the hammer form eliminates all the guesswork. In the next video, I'll pattern the metal blank and shape it over the form. I'll see you then.